Hey, hey guys, we're back reading this theory. It's called Protect Her. We left out for chapter 3. They just continue. Derek. Mr. Bennett, Janelle, pick her head into my office. Do you have a minute? I glanced down at my watch and let out a heavy sigh. No, I didn't have a minute. I didn't have a single second to spare. I was already running late for my niece's birthday, and if I wasn't there before, they served cake and sang to her. My mother would have my head. Sure, you know. What is it? I need to need you to sign up one these accounts before tomorrow. He smiled. Never see. Handed me a stick of five files. Janelle was my new assistant, while my regular one was out on the was out on maternity leave, and she was. Still learning the ropes around here. Well, I appreciated the help. I had to go back and correct several mistakes she made in the last week. And at this point, I was thinking I was better off on my own. Thank you. I took them her. I took them from her. Quickly glanced through. Each one was a potential vendor for the new hotel we were opening in a few months. And the final decision. And the final no design decision had to be made. This wasn't exactly something that could be done in a minute, and I couldn't stand to be another second later. You know what you know? I, I haven't made a final decision. I'll bring this home with me and have them on your desk first thing in the morning. I still up suffering them in I stood up suffering them into my bag. Working at home was typical for me, lady. Although I didn't mind it took a lot of work to balance a double life like I was, but day I ran a widely successful investment company and by night, well, that was a little harder to define. From the time I was little, my father was always helping other people. It didn't matter it, if the person needed a tire fixed or a warm shower and, and safe place to stay. Everyone in town knew my dad was the guy to go to. It was a value he drilled into my brother and me from a young age, and one we both carried into to adulthood. Carl took the sensible route, the stable job, beautiful wife, protect family. He was an ear doctor for Christ's sake. It was his little her job to save people. I, on the other hand, had a little different approach. There was nothing in the world that bothered me as much as good people getting taken advantage of and fighting for the underdogs. Sort of because, sort of become my thing as a contracted enforcer for a, for a faction of the Italian mafia. I made sure that people got what they deserve in every sense of the word. The good, the bad, the ugly. I guess I was more of an all-around problem solver for the group. My work wasn't just to rough people up and get what I needed. If someone needed to disappear, money moved, be framed for something, I was a guy. I taken the job from my father where, when he retired after training under him for years, and it was literally in my blood now. I wasn't threatened. I wasn't threaded into the mafia myself, but I prepared myself enough that they threatened me like family regardless. My reputation preceded me so well now that just the mention of my involvement straightened just about any situation out and I got to cherry pick the cases I was involved in. I didn't just shake people down for the fun of it. Every person I went after was the lowest of the low. Really lone sharks, violent and pimps, deadbeat babies. That is, I see my fair share of scumbags. I had a team I worked with, and most of the time I didn't have to get my hands dirty myself, and I provided the means to make this work. Only the special cases that I can do directly. As the head of a multi billion dollar company, I had connections and wealth that most of 
my clients couldn't even win fat home. And if I wasn't sharing those with the last fortune, none of it was worth while. No problem. She smiled. Good night, Mr. Bennett. Good night. I gave her a disinterested wave as she left my office. She wasn't last too long around here. I left the office and headed towards my parents' house as far as I could. If traffic was right, I could get there for the tail and end of dinner and just in time for presents and cake. That was the important part, always. Kids at this age were all about the presents, and luckily for me, Brooke had picked up out a birthday present for her before she left. I had no idea what it was, but the wrapping paper was bright and colorful, and I was sure she would have, and I was sure she would love it. The house was lit up like a Christmas tree when I arrived, and the driveway was packed with cars. I pulled in behind my brother's BMW and threw my car into park. Grabbing Hayes' present, I hurried inside and tossed my coat onto the chair. Down the hall, laughing and talking, it was, and it brought the smile to my face. My family was loud and boisterous, and most of the time completely embarrassing, but I wouldn't have it any other way. My parents were old school Italians and have been married for the nearly 30 years. My father was commanding, dead gentle, and always seemed to keep to himself, whereas my mother was the life of every Hardy and the perfect complement to him. I love watching them together in the way my father and just watch my mother and uh, their love and, and appreciation for each other was almost uh, was almost otherworldly as if God had handcrafted each one of them specifically for the other. I used to dream to I used to dream of finding the same thing, but now my mind was on other things. I got any, I, I got my gratification and thrill from work, and there was no room for a wife or family. And when I wanted to play house, I had two adorable nieces who I could hang out with, sugar them up, and then send them home to their parents. Did I miss anything? I grinned, walking into the dining room where my family was in the middle of dinner. Uncle Derek. Haley bounced up and down in her seat, waving wildly at me. Oh, there he is, my, my mother being standing up and throwing her arms around me. How are you, sweetie? Good, mama. I kiss her cheek. It smells incredible in here. Well, come sit down. Let's get you a plate. She ushered me in, in and disappeared into the kitchen to dish something up for me. Hey Derek, my sister in law smile, giving me a warm hug. It's good to see you. You too, Kate. I grinned, giving her a quick kiss on the cheek as well. Of course you're late, called Mark, rolling his eyes. I got I got caught up at the office, I chuckled. New receptionist can keep things straight for shit, Derek. My mom there's called. What does shit mean? And could Derek really Melanie's cock her head to the side, making cock her head to, to the side, smirking at me as if she knew she was getting me in trouble. Nothing, Munchkin. I ruffled her hair and kissed the top of her head and did the same to her sister. Happy birthday, Haley. Thank you. Is that present for me? Haley beamed, belling her beautiful eyes at me. That's what exactly. That was exactly why I couldn't have a family. I couldn't intimidate the toughest of criminals and gang leaders. But one look into her eyes, and I was pu and, and, and I was poly in their hands. Well, of course it is. I smile, setting it down next to her. Nani, now the uncle Derek is here. Can we have? Can we have? Come cake, really ex. Getting right to the point. Sure, sweetie. 
after Uncle Derek eats his dinner, especially after Uncle Derek eats his dinner, and you have to finish your broccoli, come on, Charlie. That's right, I said. And maybe even a few of these carrots you hide under your plate. I smirk, sliding into the seat next to my dad. Lillian, Kate rolled her eyes. Yes, those carrots too. Thanks a lot, Uncle Derek. She got. She grumbled, glaring at me. As far as I was concerned, it was payback for pointing out when I cursed. When I cursed earlier, my dad. I say, Hi, dad. I smiled, sitting down in the empty chair next to him. Good to see you, son. He slapped me on the back. How's it going? Been busy. I have something I want to run by you a little later. I said, taking a napkin and draping it over my lap. No business at the table, boys. My mother slid a heaping plate of spaghetti in sausage and papers. And peppers. Of course, Mom. A small tabling. Evening. Of course, Mom. I, I smell tabling. Everything until later. We enjoyed the rest of the dinner and then sang her birthday to Haley as she blew out her candles. She opened her present. She opened presents, and I was a tremendous hit with the nail polish set that Brooke said that Brooke had chosen. My brother was more s- subdued tonight than normal, usually teasing and, and bantering with me all night. Tonight he was quiet and lay back, and I could tell something was on his mind. And she was getting all of her toys out to play. Paul and I stepped outside for a beer. You came in? I asked when we were out on the deck alone. Is thing kind of off tonight? Yeah, I'm fine. He leaned against the railing, looking out over the lake. I just have a lot on my mind with work lately. Do you want to talk about it? I pride pr- taking a go out of my beer. Cole was the other brother and normally I was the one taking advice from him. Not really. He shook his head. Just, just this girl. Girl, my eyes widen and how are you cheating? Okay. No, you moron. He rolled his eyes. Nothing, not, nothing like that. It's just, uh, just this girl who has been coming into to the ER. He raked his fingers through his hair. It could be nothing, but I'm Worry. She comes in twice that I know of and giving a fake name each time. John, beautiful, I can tell she comes from money. She lives in Tribeca but comes to the Bronx for her medical care, probably to avoid running into anyone she knows. Pays in cash so that there's no paper trail. She's been beaten by her husband badly. Last night I stitched up a nasty cut on her forehead. A few weeks before, I said a, I said a s- separated shoulder. That's just what she been seeing in my in my ER for that in my ER for. But she had a bunch of old bruises along her collarbone. I her collarbone and neck. Jesus. Let out a heavy sigh that this hadn't been what I was expecting at all. Carl usually took his work home with him, but how could you not with a case like this? What are you going to do? He shrugged. There isn't much I can do. I don't know if I ever see her again, and I have no way of tracking her. All I've got is a few fake names. Do you want me to look into it? I offered a pet for me in my stomach. It was already bringing up terrible memories from an old case I worked. No, it's fine. I just need to forget about it. Can help somebody who doesn't want to be helped, right? He shook his head. Come on, let's get back inside. And we headed in. Shit, phone ping with a text message. Shit, what is it? Headed out. A heavy sigh work is my floating shift when I cut call in. Call. Saying, I drove into the hospital in, fr- in frustration. It w- would happen that the one, the one the night of my daughter's birthday. 
and I'd be heading in for this stupid filling shift. The hospital required everyone to take one, one a month, and most of the time, it was at one of our sisters' hospital around the city. I helped pilot the program with a few other ER chiefs, and most of the time. I love it. It was a fun way for our dogs to get out and see how other hospitals ran their departments. Tonight, though, I was tonight though I was cursing myself. Kate took the kids home, and I had to leave my parents' house quickly so I could get there in time. Tonight, I will work at St. Joe's in Queens. That was a that was generally a tough ER to be in. It will be rough area with a lot of gangs violence and more often than not. We would deal with multiple gunshot victims. Going home to my family after a night of can carnage like that was always hard, which was odd considering what my brother did for a living. I had to help him more times than I care for. And we used to, and we used to, we used to the chaos of his storm. But it wasn't for me. He had all the money and guns and girls he could want, and he was damn good at at what he did, both the legal and illegal things. I parked in the employee that inhaled inside. Right off the bat, I was hit with a bunch of cases to see. The first was a woman who had cut her hand cooking dinner, eight stitches, and and I was out. Next, the man was next. The man with the with the dislocated knee. His leg bones were going in completely different direction, and I couldn't resist. It ran away, so I gave him some sedative and left and left to let it set in. At the of the corner of my eye, I saw a woman being squatted to an empty room. Was that well? I be damned! It was my it, it was my mystery woman. Hey, I got the attention of the resident. You got room five, right? Yep. He nodded. It's a sad thing. Here, I need to trade you. I handed him the file for the dislocated leg guy. The kid frowned. Why? Because this will be a better experience for you. I got her file from him. Elizabeth with broken ribs. That was a new one. The kid. I agree and headed off down the hall while I went to room 5 where the mystery girl was waiting. I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to handle this. Knock knock, I said opening the door slowly. She turned around with a big smile on her face. But it quickly faded with, faded when our eyes met. She grabbed her purse and stood up frantically. She had a hell of a shinner forming in a fat lip. And in fact, the she was completely frazzled, and she tried to move past me. I made a mistake coming here. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye, guys.